Hi there, it's Laura here from Get Organized HQ and I'm coming to you from my garage. You can see these boxes behind me because we are gonna be moving really soon. So I thought I would go ahead and share with you some of my top tips for a smooth and organized move. Now, we have moved many times within the past several years and have learned a lot along the way. I will tell you the one thing that made all the difference in our moves, in this move and the last two, we used a moving binder. And that is what just transformed everything for us. We had so many people say it was the most organized move they've ever seen. And honestly, it went so well. And that was all because we were organized and used the moving binder. So I'm gonna be showing you at the end of this video how I put mine together, what resources I use, or if you wanna get this for yourself, go ahead and check out that link down below. Also, I've done a video on this in the past. So if you wanna go check out my past moving video, you can click the link below. Um, these are brand new tips though. So um, I won't be repeating anything I did in that video. So if you wanna go check that out at the end, you can. So let's go ahead and dive in. Besides the moving binder that I'll talk about in the end, let's go ahead and dive in to the tips. This is something that I don't hear given a lot as a moving tip, but make sure you take pictures and or video of your current home before you start packing it up. Because for me, those homes, they just hold so many memories. It's where I brought my baby home from the hospital. It was our first home after we got married. It's where, you know, my daughter started kindergarten or all these things, they just hold so many memories. And I don't wanna start packing up and then realize, oh, I don't have any pictures of the spaces. So I go through with a camera, take a picture of all the spaces. I even take a picture of the closets. Uh, for this most recent move, I did a video that I'll be posting on the channel soon about my organized home tour before we packed up. Do that just for your own memory's sake. Now let's talk about boxes for your move. Now, of course you can tell your friends and family, hey, if you have any extra boxes, send them our way. But another way to get moving boxes without having to pay for them is to use a Nextdoor app or something like Facebook and ask on there, hey, does anybody have any boxes they're getting rid of? Or sometimes you'll even see posts on there of people that have just moved and they need to get rid of their boxes. You're probably doing them a favor if you go take them off of their hands anyway, so they don't have to figure out what to do with them. And you'll get some good boxes that way. Also, I am not opposed to paying for boxes even though I'm a fairly frugal person. I find to get us started, if we just spend 20, 30, 40 dollars at Home Depot on boxes, it can go a long way because those boxes are sturdy, they have handles, they're all uniform in size, they stack nicely. So in some ways you really do get what you pay for. So I'm not opposed to spending a little bit at one of those home improvement stores for moving boxes. Next, let's talk about hanging clothes. I think it's easiest if you don't even remove those from the hanger because that's a lot of extra work to take them off the hanger, put them in a box, and then have to hang them back up. Instead, I have put them in boxes just kind of folded over once on the hanger, especially for kids' clothes that are really small, or I have taken them and put a trash bag over them just to keep them protected, but I like keeping them on the hangers when you move. It just makes it so much easier when you're putting them away. When you're actually packing, make sure that you take like heavy coats and blankets and don't just put those all in one box. Instead, use those as fillers or cushioning so that if you have something more fragile or something that you don't wanna slide around, and there's always these boxes with just a little bit of empty space, and the fuller you fill the box, the better, so there's less moving around inside the box. So don't waste those blankets in a box of their own. Instead, use them as filler, or if the box is getting too heavy and you need something light, a blanket is the perfect solution for that. A little logistical tip that I like to do is about a week before our move, I will transition us to all paper products and I will do either like food that is takeout or like a casserole in a disposable pan. So I will make sure that we have all throwaway food or I'll have the ingredients for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and like a plastic knife. So that way we can pack up our kitchen without needing it. So just plan for that and plan for those easy meals and stuff that you can just throw away. 
Next, I recommend doing what we have done here in our garage, and as we pack boxes, we move them to one spot in our garage and we're just building our stack of boxes as we go. And that helps us with a couple things. First of all, once a back box is packed full and ready to go, we get it out of the house. So we can easily see what we have and what boxes still need to be packed. And number two, this makes it so much easier on moving day. I cannot tell you how much time this saves because when the truck comes, Make this location as close to your door as you can. For us, I mean, the truck is gonna park just right there. So nobody has to carry those boxes very far at all, but it didn't take that much extra work for us gradually over time to bring them down to where they're, they're gonna live until they get on the truck. So I love that for a smoother move, especially on moving day. After moving many times in my life and helping lots of other people move, I can tell you one mistake that everybody makes, and I have done this myself, so don't feel bad if you're guilty of this, is underestimating all those odds and ends. You know those little stuff at the very end, like there's a few things under the bathroom sink and a few things under the kitchen sink and a few things left high up here in this closet. Those things are really hard to pack and time consuming because a lot of them are not the type of thing that's easily thrown into a box. Maybe there's like cleaners that can spill and things like that. So more thought has to be put into packing them. And those are the things that a lot of people leave to the very end. So you're trying to load up your moving truck, lots of things are going on and you're still dealing with those last minute odds and ends. So you cannot be too prepared with packing up the odds and ends. I like to make sure that before I go to bed, the night before the move, all of that is like completely ready to go and I'm simply living out of a suitcase. There is nothing, like it's all empty. That's gonna make your life so much smoother and easier and I can just tell you from experience, those things are gonna take two or three times as long as you imagine that they will. And I actually find that the further you get into packing, the slower it goes. Like the first boxes go really fast because those are the really, really easy things and the longer you get into it, the more tricky items you're left with. So account for those taking a little bit longer. Don't overestimate what you can get done. It is easy to be too ambitious, or maybe it's just me, but I wanna use moving as an opportunity to declutter. I mean, what point is there in moving something that I am simply gonna declutter later? So I wanna get a lot done, I wanna streamline. This is a great goal and I highly recommend doing that, but here's the mistake. As we get closer to move time, lower the bar. There comes a time where you just have to call it and say, if I haven't gotten it decluttered, I'm not. We need to shift our focus from this and just get it all in the boxes. Do that sooner than you think you need to and you will only thank yourself. Worst case, you happen to finish the packing early and you have a little bit of time to relax. But the alternative is that you're not actually prepared and that's a really awful feeling. So know when to call it and say, now our goal, and usually for me that is like seven days ahead of time, forget trying to streamline anything, forget Goodwill, get it all in boxes so it can go to the new house. As I mentioned, my secret weapon to an organized move is my moving binder. I actually have here, our current moving binder is right here, and these are our previous two moving binders from our last two moves, and these have been a game changer. And um, the last two moving binders were amazing, but I have revamped this moving printable kit even more and made it even better. So we just updated the look, modernized it a little bit and added some more additional rooms and some additional pages that might be really helpful to you. So let me just walk you through this and wait until you see the auto magical way that it fills up. That is my favorite part about this kit and just wait until you see it. But first let me kind of walk you through it and what it is. So we personally put our moving legend on the outside just so it's really, really easy for us to see our master key of where all the rooms are. Now, we are moving into a really big house that's kind of like um, an area for the business and a home combined, and so we have a ton of rooms. Um, most people won't, we've never used more than this page, but if you do, it's there for you. If you don't, just don't use the second page, or you can subdivide by like room versus closet or something like that if you wanted to be that in depth. So that's what we have done. There's also a pretty binder outside cover if you want to. And then we've organized ours with the box index first. This is where we're going through and we just write the box number, where it's going, like the garage and what's in it, like the air mattress. Now, this might feel silly, 
You might think, why am I taking the time to write down the contents of the box? Let me tell you, this is a lifesaver. For example, just the other day, my husband had been packing and he packed up the air mattress with the pump and then my kids wanted to swim in that pool where you need the air mattress pump to blow it up. And I was able to go to this index and see, oh, box 20 has our air mattress and the pump. So it was very easy for me to get it out. Same when you arrive. So this is just a lifesaver. Um, the earlier it is, the more I fill it out, the closer it gets to the move, <laughs> the lazier I get. And that's just life. It's okay. Um, so we have the box index. Print this page out as many times as you want. You'll see here in the past, we have a lot of boxes in our moves. <laughs> Um, I'll just thumb through this for you. Um, and I don't worry about keeping it neat. I It's just functional for me. So we had 109 boxes <laughs> um, on this move, on the most recent move. This one's gonna have probably even more. So we start with the index and then, this is what I think is so cool. Then we punch our labels. I use Avery labels and I'm gonna talk about which exact ones in just a moment. That's what we use. We print these out and they're all ready to go in our binder. So as we're packing, we just take one of these off and we place it on the box. And all we write right here is the box number. So we would write like one, two, whatever the box number is, and then we would write that down on our index. So uh, we follow the same order that we did on our master key. And here, um, we have just denoted that tab one has all of these, tab two has all of these. That's how we organize it. You can do it however you want. So you'll see here I have the kitchen, we can flip through these. Then we have uh, my daughter's room, the master bed, Room, and then we come over here and we have garage. Now we'll take this out once we've used up the last one and so on. So we flip through several of those. Just having these like this makes it so easy. You just need one binder and you're good to go and you can pack anything, no matter who is packing. If it's me, if it's my husband, if someone is helping us, often we've had somebody come by and help a little bit. So easy for everyone to follow the system and have everything right there together in one place. Um, then let me show you some of the other components. So we've added some labels, the Open Me First boxes. I talked about in my last video that I will link to about the importance of these, but you can label those if something's extra heavy. I like to label that just so people kind of have a heads up, this is gonna be heavier than it looks. Um, if something is really fragile, you can label that. You can also label this end up. So sometimes I'll put a bin without a lid and I'll put this end up on the box just so everybody knows Go ahead and put this end up. Now when you're using the labels, it's usually clear which end is up, but if I want a little extra reassurance, I'll go ahead and add that label. Um, do not stack label for you. This is our your at a glance where you can write your old and new residents. Just have it right there for you. So whenever you're you know changing utilities and all of those things, it's super, super easy for you. Then this is my favorite, and this is new to this kit, is our master checklist kit. And so we've pre-populated this for you with the things we think are really important for you you to do and then you fill in the rest yourself and as you go you just check off six weeks before five four three two one the day before moving day and after the move so it's kind of your master list of everything to do we also included a blank version for you in case you want to come up with it all yourself and you don't like our <laughs> pre uh ideas for you. Um, I like a list of food to eat up. A lot of times people overlook that, but you want to know what food it is that you need to eat up before you go. Um, this stop and start, super helpful. So old residents, electric, new residents, gas, water, sewage. If you don't have it, just cross it out. Like our new house doesn't have gas, it's all electric. Um, but that's super important for knowing, keeping track of the utilities that you need to make sure you get stopped at your current residence and started at your new residence. So those are just a few. We have some others as well. And then we also have, these are room signs that coordinate with the key. So if you want to tape up on the door, like in my video room, like no one's just gonna know what that is. <laughs> um, and that means like room for me to film videos. I'll have like a dedicated studio. Um, so we'll hang that on the door to make it clear. Now some things are clear like the kitchen. I hope people can figure out what the kitchen is, uh, but that is just gonna make it extra clear. Now let me show you how you actually do this. And this is so cool. So um, you'll get this moving kit. Um, when you buy it, it's an instant download. You'll get an email right away with a download link and you can just start using it right then and there. Um, 
There's some simple instructions. There are some of these sheets that I have talked about here first. So print out which of those you don't you need. If you don't need them, I would say don't print them out. I like to kind of print out one by one. Print out several of the box index I would recommend because you'll need that. I like this open me first index. So I know which boxes are those open me first boxes that have like shower curtain, towel, important things. Now this is where the true magic of this kit comes in. So this moving legend here, you type it once and it automatically fills everything else out according to your legend. So if we scroll down a little bit here, you're gonna see like these are the room signs, they're empty, um, as are the labels, okay? But when I fill out this legend, they are going to automatically fill, fill out for me. So let's say I want this dark red to be the kitchen. I like to do it in all caps. You can do it ever how you want. This is um, an Arial font that everyone should have on their computer, so there should be no fonts to install or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna say girls bedroom, master bedroom, um, office, main bath, um, Playroom, um, guest bath, guest room, garage. I always have the garage on there and storage room, okay? So I've typed these in simply once. And as I scroll down now, I'm just gonna leave this blank as if um, you don't have that many rooms that you want to, which many people won't. And you'll see how it's automatically filled out these room signs for me. And then you'll see these next ones are blank because I didn't use that part of the legend. I just don't, pretend like I don't have that much I want to move to. And then it is also filled out these labels for me. That is the true beauty of this system. Type it once and it's magically done for you. Now I know you'll see these blue boxes behind it. Those do not actually print. Um, that is just saying that's a fillable form on the, on the, kit but they don't actually print so you'll see this is how it printed it will not print the um those blue boxes so that is all there is to it um it's really that simple the one other thing i want to mention is how to put this binder together now these are avery labels and it says right here on the actual every page in case you forget that it prints best on avery 8163 labels um, those are two by four inches now those are labels that you could just get at any store any office supply store on amazon very very easily but i want to point out one thing about those labels and tell you why i actually used a different label so if you use those Avery 8163 labels, they are not removable. So like if you stick them on a piece of paper, on a box, on a piece of furniture, they may not come off. And heads up, that's not great on some of your furniture. Now, luckily we don't have any super fancy furniture. Um, it'll come off with Goo Gone. Hasn't been a huge issue, but you do want to label that furniture because it's very, very important that that gets to the right room. Like if a box goes to the wrong room, you can move it yourself. But for us on moving day, there's some stuff that's too heavy for us to move. So we want to make sure like we get the bookshelf in the office and not in the living room, those kind of things um, where we want it. So I want to be able to put it on the furniture without worrying. And also it's nice to be able to take it off of even like plastic totes or boxes. So Avery actually allows you from their website to order any of their sizes in any of their styles. And they have a style here. You'll see this is what I actually ordered on removable matte white paper and I'll leave a link to this below to both of them um, so this will take about a week or two to arrive so it takes slightly longer than if you just went to your local store and bought it um, and you can buy in lots of quantities heads up if you buy in a larger quantity it brings the price down significantly so make sure you check that out and make sure you're getting the best quantity and the best price and then it will cost a little bit more to get these that removed so if you wanted to save you might do some of each um, you can't really see um, they're just a sheet of labels they're the exact same size as the 8163 but they are removable and won't really damage your furniture so this is what i have printed my last binder on now one other note on assembling we have assembled in various different ways most recently for this move, we we're just using a three ring binder. So we simply literally punched the labels and all the pages in a three ring binder. Nothing's gonna fall out. It's very easy to use. What I will say though, if you do this, and I highly recommend that you punch them into a binder, um, three of the labels are gonna be, like there's gonna be a hole in them. So we just kind of rip them like that and it doesn't bother us. 
could bother you, so I just want to note that's what we do. Um, one other thing that I want to note, so for our previous moves, we've used the Discbound system. I'm a huge fan of Discbound. Um, I think these are ARC supplies from Staples. Um, so what the Discbound system does is it means that you're not punching very far into the paper. So that's super nice. Um, this is our old style of moving binder. Um, so you're barely punching into the actual labels themselves at all. The trade-off is if you are really carrying this around a lot or you're holding it like this and you're kind of jerking it, they can pop off a little bit. So for the moving binder, we went for the security of the three rings. Um, even though it's gonna mean a couple of our labels will just have like a little hole in them. Um, you could use page protectors. Um, we thought that would be just harder to get the labels out. Like you'd have to pull the sheet out and put it back in. We thought that this was easier. So we're very happy with that choice. One other note on my last video, um, we got several comments about tips for actually packing the boxes. Like literally, how do you pack the boxes? Well, let me give you my tip. <laughs> There is no magic way. Um, we have tried all different things. I gave you the advice of using blankets as fillers. I would also say fuller is better just so things don't shift around, but it is pretty tricky because as you're going, it's just you're not gonna have things that fit the boxes perfectly. Um, so you're gonna have to have some, some with some extra room. You're gonna end up with some that are a little heavier than you wanted. Um, I just haven't found like the magic way to pack boxes that means that they're packed. Perfectly. So I just want to let you know that if you feel the same way, you're not alone. There's no real magic. Just get it done however you can is my best advice. I hope this video has helped give you some tips for a smooth and organized move and be sure to click the link below to check out the moving binder that I talked about and get it for yourself and I would love to hear from you. If you use these tips in your next move, let me know how it goes for you.